for today's Money Makeup Lesson, I am sharing my top 10 steps that you can add to any eye makeup look. Now you can do all 10 or you can mix and match, it's totally up to you, but this will add such a difference to any eye makeup look that you choose to wear. Now if you're new here to the Makeup Chair channel and you enjoy tutorials like this, then I might suggest hitting the subscribe button below, it's totally free. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started with my top 10 tips. So I've already applied some basic eyeshadow, but you don't even have to wear any eyeshadows in order to do these steps. You can do them with or without eyeshadow. But I created this very basic look using just three eyeshadows, and we're gonna start off with tip number one, which is tight lining. Tight lining actually originally came from the line at the back of tights, but when you couldn't get tights, you'd actually just draw it yourself, which my grandmother used to do which is kind of cool. But nowadays, tight lining is actually where you apply a little darker shadow, pencil, gel, whatever it is, to the upper part of your wet or water line. I do find that this area can be more exposed for some people more than others, or if you are getting a lash lift, this can really expose this area because it pulls all the lashes upwards, and then you can see this area a lot more. So by adding a slightly darker shade, like a dark brown or black, it can really emphasize your eyes, give them a lot more definition. And this is great for lazy days when you don't actually want to apply makeup or you want to go very understated or really natural looking. Just applying a small amount of this can go a long way. Now it can be a little tricky and a little ticklish to apply. So I would always recommend looking down in the mirror, pushing on the lid ever so slightly to lift this area and then always remember to look in the opposite direction to where you are applying. You can also use this to change your eye shape. So you can just apply it on the outer third or maybe the inner third or the entire length of your lash line. If you only apply it on the outer edge, you get kind of a fox look. If you want to bring your eyes close together, apply it just to the inner two thirds. I always like to just do it from lash to lash. So I don't go right to the inner corner. I just go where my lashes start and stop. Moving on, we have the waterline. The waterline is basically the lower part of the tight line. Now for my waterline, I'm actually going to be applying a nude shade. So I always like to tight line first, just in case it smudges and drops down to my lower waterline. That way I can just clean it up with a Q-tip before applying a nude shade. Now I would recommend using nude and not white. Make sure it matches your skin tone, just a little bit lighter. When you're applying this, what I like to do is not pull the eyes down, but actually push against the eyes. This will just expose a little bit more of that area for you. So no pulling, just pushing against the skin. Similar to tight lining, you can actually change your eye shape and change the eye appearance just by the different ways that you apply liner on the waterline. If you want your eyes to look more vertical, rounded, lifted, and brighter, just apply a nude on the center and blend it out and in. If you have droopy eyes, apply a slightly darker shade on the outer edge. This will just lift the eyes a little bit more. And if your eyes are close together, you can apply the lighter shade to the inner corner and this will just brighten up this area. Tight lining and water lining are amazing for creating this very subtle change. And I highly recommend giving it a try because it makes such a difference and yet very subtle. Next we have curling. Now, if you have straight lashes like me and the curl doesn't stay, then this trick is for you. Apply a very, very fine layer of mascara. I mean, super sheer one coat of mascara. I then want you to let it completely dry and then go in with your eyelash curler. This creates a lot more structure and a lot more hold. So then when you apply the rest of your mascara, as we're gonna talk about in a second, it will just create a little bit more lift and keep that curl in place. Now, if you're scared of your eyelash curler, there's so many different ones to choose from. What I like to do is just line it up with the edge of my eye, lay it onto my lid, give it a little tiny push just on kind of lifting the lashes in and then a gentle squeeze. The longer you hold it, the longer the hold will be. That layer of mascara has created a little bit more structure so that hold is going to stay in place. Now, speaking of mascara, what I like to do is layer my mascara. This is a tip that I learned from Robert Jones, one of my favorite makeup artists, and he always layers his mascara. He will do a very thin layer as he goes along creating the eye makeup look. I know that some people get really scared about layering because they think they're going to end up with very heavy lashes or little bits here and there, but as long as you make sure that you are drying out the lashes in between each very thin layer, you won't have that problem. 
Another way that you can make your lashes look even fuller and add some more definition to your eyes is Invisible Liner. This is applying a very, very thin layer of liner right where the lashes start and stop. Similar to tight lining, except this time we're going above the lashes and not underneath them. This is also great if you have a little bit of fallout that might have dropped down onto your lashes. Just paint those lashes with a little bit of liner and it will just add that darkness and add that definition. And you can also do this underneath the eyes. However, what I wouldn't recommend doing is a solid line all the way across. What I would actually recommend doing is spacing it out ever so slightly. This just adds a little bit more definition to the lower lash line and the lower lashes as well. And again, just with the lashes above, I also like to layer my mascara on the lower lashes. Now, if you are not blessed with great lashes, I am not blessed with great lashes, fake ones are the way to go. My preferred way is actually to apply them underneath and push upwards. So I apply a specialized glue that is used for this type of technique. And then I place my lashes and kind of lean into them and then push upwards. Then all you have to do is just squeeze the entire length just to get them to hold in place. Now, if you're ever worried about your lashes not holding in place, maybe you can't squeeze them quite tight enough. You can feed your eyelash curler over this Give it a very gentle squeeze just to make sure it's held in place without affecting the actual shape of the lashes and they should stay in place a lot more for you. Just be very gentle. Eyebrows. Eyebrows are the border. They create the beautiful framework similar to your lashes. They're the overall frame that adds so much more to your eye makeup looks. Don't forget to give them a little bit of definition. I like to apply some concealer first, make sure I'm really getting it in there, and then I just very lightly fill them in with either a pencil or a little bit of shadow. But don't forget to at least brush them up into place. I would also recommend cleaning up around the eyes after you have done your eye makeup look. I like to do my eyes first and then I can clean up and do the rest of my makeup. It will literally make you a pro. If you're really good at cleaning up around the eyes, you can do whatever you want on those eyes and they're gonna shine and look amazing as long as you clean up around it. And my last tip is to find your happiness. Your eyes are so beautiful, but you can never fully appreciate your own eyes. No matter how close we look at them on a mirror or if we zoom up on a picture, we can never fully capture the same way that somebody looking at us can see all of this emotion and all of our character within our eyes. But there is one way to capture it just ever so slightly. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to look at your eye and then I want you to either look upwards or close your eyes. And I want you to think about something that makes you happy. It might be a happy memory, a person, a place, a pet. Now I want you to look at your eye again. There is going to be a very slight difference that maybe you'll be able to capture and just appreciate your eyes for what they are. And it doesn't matter what eye color you have or how many wrinkles you have. None of that really matters. It's all about this, this moment and emotion that we can't fully ever appreciate, but by thinking happy thoughts, there's just this ever so slight change in how our faces look and the expression that our eyes portray. And that is why it's so important to be kind to yourself. And this is something that I always talk about. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. I'd also recommend doing happy banking, which is basically when you are in a really happy space or you're surrounded by things or people that make you happy, just take 10 seconds to close your eyes and just take in every sensation, hold it all together in those 10 seconds and put that in your mind. If you want to hear a little bit more about happy banking, you can go and check out my video that I posted recently. I will link that below. But as always, my friends, keep shining, keep being yourself, be proud of yourself, and as always, be kind to yourself. And I'll see you guys in a video really soon. And I also want you to have a happy bank. So basically what I do is when I am feeling good, content in a really happy environment, I will close my eyes and I will count to 10 